All right, so here is how we do the flowering tree in the moonlight. Luckily, all the paint sets have a blue. You can see here, this one. Um, so we'll start with the moon and the sky. We'll use the white of the canvas. And for this, let's go ahead and find something that is circular around the house. This could be, um, this is just a piece of cardboard that I have. I've got a yarn cone. Um, at home, you probably have cups or something. That's what I used before, just a cup. And then go ahead and line up whatever you choose. Maybe the upper right-hand corner and then go over the edges with a light pencil line. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show this with um, this particular set. These are all the lighter colors and I'll demonstrate how to mix a brown. And if you have other, a different color set, I can review some options for you. With that, I'm gonna open each of the little lids. There. Now for this, I'm gonna start with this, um, no, never mind. What did I start with? The pink. I'm gonna start with the pink first. I'm gonna have it go from pink to blue. I'm gonna take the wide brush and carefully go around the edges of the circle. You can go ahead and do this with me and please feel free to stop and start the video. If I'm going too fast. Okay. Now the nature of this paint is that it's gonna be a little bit slightly translucent. That means you can see through it to the canvas a little. Um, you can add more layers and where it's thicker, of course you can see it's more, it's a little darker. And then as I fade out, I'm gonna go around and around in a circular motion until I get to blue. Okay, and then I'll add a layer of blue. And what's really nice is you can see it blend to a soft purpley tone where they overlap. This of course being the light blue that's in this set. further you go towards the pink, the more, of course, you'll see of purple. And this part probably takes the longest for this one, actually for both paintings, doing the sky just because it's such a big, big area. Now, something fun you can do if you'd like is um, with a wrapper on canvas like this, you can paint along the edges. And that's neat if you plan on uh, hanging this in your home or displaying it on a shelf. If you plan on getting a frame, then you might not need to do that. Okay. And notice too, I'm kind of, I'm not really painting all over in different directions. I am still continuing this circular motion as I go out toward the blank edges of the canvas have a nice movement to it. This will be our focal point of the picture. Okay, so take your time and just get it all covered. All right, now it's all smoothed out and looks great. Just as a reminder again, if you have these darker colored, more bold colors, I started with purple and then added blue. And then this one here, it's just peach and then the blue provided there, okay? All right, now um, we're gonna start on the tree branch. 
And this is where it's helpful. If you have either this set that I'm using or the set that has the primary and secondary colors, you're gonna have to mix a brown. And I'm gonna show how to do that right now. Though. The other set, the one that has the black and the white, the more neutral colors, that obviously has a brown that you can use. Okay, now, I, there's a lot of ways to make brown. I'm gonna go ahead and show you now by mixing two complementary colors. I'm gonna do red and green. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out some on a little paper plate here. Okay, there's the red and the green. And we'll see what we get now. It's probably gonna be really red right now because I can tell it more red than green. And you can just kind of play with the combination until it gets to be what you want it to be. A bit more green. It's becoming kind of a nice brown color. Maybe a little more green, just a tiny bit more red. Okay, it doesn't need to be a lot. All right, and I'll show you one more version here. This is nice. This is with my, my lighter set. And then over here, I can do the same thing. I can mix my red and green. Other ways to make brown that doesn't really work with these sets, but very easy, orange and black. That's another way to make a brown if you ever don't have one. Okay, or you can try a different complementary pair, such as purple and yellow, or blue and orange. Okay, this one's nice because it's that with the colors being a little darker, you'll get a nice deep brown, almost black. Okay, so either of these would be what you would do if you have these sets and you need a brown. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to using, of course, just this one that I started with. Here's my painting. I'm going to wipe my brush. There. Okay, so for this, we're going to start with a, just a big Y shape, kind of on its side. I'm going to start in the bottom left-hand corner and brush right over my background sky. This will be my thicker part of the tree, right? And then, well, I don't know, just a, maybe a couple inches in, start to break away. And this is a family paint night, so if some of the younger students need a little help with this part, that's absolutely fine. Work on this together. Okay, now, a lot of my students have heard me talk about this, how we hold our brush can make lots of different types of lines. I should have mixed more brown. Anyway, um, you know, I'm making kind of a medium line. If I hold my brush more upright like this, straight up and down, I can make lots of thin lines. I am running out of brown. I'm going to take a break to make a little bit more. Okay, so go ahead, make some thin lines, just pick spaces where you'd like to branch off in different diagonal directions. And I just hold my brush more and more upright as I get into the thinner branches. And again, with this paint being a little on the thin side, you might have to do a couple layers, let it sit for a moment and go back into it. And that's fine. Okay, that's looking good. And feel free to have some branches go all the way to the edges. Maybe even creep right by the moon. Or even, this is kind of fun, off the top. It gets out of the page, out of the, the view. And again, this is my smaller brush. And we'll do some down here. The way you position your branches can really frame that moon shape. All right, looks good to me. 
And like I said, you can let it sit for a little bit. You can add more layers if you want that brown to be a little darker. This is um, being the lightest set of colors, the, the colors I'm showing you here. It's just going to be a little bit of a lighter brown in general. And just to show one more time, this is, of course, this brown here. And with this one, this is that homemade brown. Done with these bold colors. Okay, let's move on to doing some flowers, the best part. So, of course, I'm still going to use that. I'm still going to use the small brush because we're going to do little dots. So I'm going to wipe it clean. And this set's nice because it has lots of fun colors I could use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with this lovely purpley color, almost magenta. Now, with this, just pick and choose areas all near the branches that you want to see little flowers. Holding the brush upright, I'm just doing basically a dot painting. we can do them all over. If you want to do more of an actual flower, sometimes I do four to five dots that form a circle. Okay, it's a little flowering branch. It reminds me of a Japanese cherry blossom. However, depending on your paint set, you might have the exact colors. Now, all of them do have either a red or a pink or purple, so that's good. Or a little, um, the ones that has a peach in it, I think, that can work nicely. Okay. And when you switch to new colors, we'll go switch to the pink. Go ahead and same thing. We have the little dots go right off the branches. Adding lots of them. Okay, I've been adding more dots. You can even have some go trickle right into that moonlight. That's kind of fun. Okay. If you find that your dots are getting big and bulky, just make sure to every now and then wipe off your brush and just use the very, very tip of the brush and that helps to keep it and get real small that way. It's nice to have the different varieties of sizes. Now, if you'd like to add any leaves, I know one of the sets doesn't have a green at all, and it really doesn't need the leaves, I don't think. I think the colors are so pretty as it is. Um, go ahead and do just quick little, little lines. Maybe just here and there. Add another little pop of color. Because, of course, in the spring, a lot of the flowering trees flower before all the leaves are out. Hopefully you're liking your picture and it's coming along. And really you can add as, as much as you want. You can just keep going and adding to it. There we are. See, this is the one with no green, but I think it still looks very, very nice. Just using, I, I, I did the pink, the, pe the peach, and the white there for the flowers. Okay, and this one doesn't have a pink. But I definitely, you could definitely use the purples and the reds. If you want to throw an orange and yellow, my son told me it looked more like a fall tree then, but you can absolutely do whatever colors you'd like. All right, everyone. I hope you like your flowering tree. Make sure to clean off your brushes and your area and let it dry for a little while. Enjoy.